On September 12, 1888, the Barbersville Seminary was founded by the Methodist Episcopal Church South. Located in the former Cabell County Courthouse, the school enrolled 25 young men and women. In 1889, Barbersville Seminary became a college. By 1900, the school was in financial distress. Morris Harvey, who had become wealthy developing land along the New River Gorge and was well known for his philanthropy, stepped in. He and his wife, Rosa, helped the struggling institution pay its outstanding debts. To honor their generosity, the school was renamed in 1901 to Morris Harvey College. By 1924, enrollment at Morris Harvey College was only 63 students and, facing possible closure, the school considered moving to a new location. Although the Charleston Chamber of Commerce offered to raise $300,000 if it could establish a grade A college in the Charleston area, Morris Harvey College remained in Barbersville. The year was 1929 and the nation's economy collapsed with the crash of the stock market. As a result, the trustees of Morris Harvey were convinced that significant changes must be made. They elected David Kirby as president and Leonard Riggleman as vice president. Both men had been student ministers and outstanding leaders in their respective classes. However, after serving less than a year, Kirby resigned his position and Riggleman was named president in 1931. He would serve for 33 years, the longest term for any president of the institution. In 1935, still in the grip of the Great Depression, Morris Harvey College moved to downtown Charleston. The move, along with the merger with Kanawha Junior College and affiliation with the Mason College of Fine Arts and Music, would mean tremendous growth over the next several years. These were serious times, but the nation, including the students of Morris Harvey College, still found ways to have fun. In 1937, Al Capp's Lil Abner comic strip introduced Sadie Hawkins Day, when unmarried ladies could win a husband by snatching him in a foot race. In 1938, Morris Harvey held the first ever Sadie Hawkins Day, which would become a national phenomenon with events at more than 200 colleges by 1939. In 1946, Paramount Pictures sent Al Cap himself to Charleston to film the event. In 1940, the trustees purchased the current site of the school, an 11-acre tract, from the CNO Railroad Company for $47,500. In 1942, Morris Harvey College chose to withdraw from the Methodist Church and become independent rather than move from Charleston. In 1947, Morris Harvey College officially moved to the South Ruffner site. The campus was made up of several small government surplus buildings, but President Riggleman told the crowd, although the buildings are only temporary, the landing is permanent. Moving a college twice in a lifetime is enough. We are here to stay. 1948 and 49 saw what would be called the most glorious year in Morris Harvey athletics. The football team, coached by Eddie King, won the school's first state championship. The men's basketball team, led by national points per game leader George King, won the WVIAC regular season championship. And Verlin Sparky Adams coached the baseball team to share in the WVIAC championship. Athletic greatness at MHC continued. The football team was named Little College National Champions by the press in 1951. MHC won three consecutive bowl games beginning in 1950 with a victory over Emory and Henry in the Tangerine Bowl, now known as the Capital One Bowl. In 1967 and 68, coach Rich McFessel took the Golden Eagles men's basketball team to back-to-back -back Final Four and Elite Eight appearances. Enrollment at Morris Harvey grew until in 1971, at the height of the Vietnam War, the student body reached an all-time high of 3,000. On December 13, 1978, the Board of Trustees voted to rename the institution. The graduating class of 1979 received two diplomas, one for Morris Harvey College and one with the school's new name, the University of Charleston. The Harveys are still honored through the name of the Morris Harvey Division of Arts and Sciences and the UC mascot affectionately known as Mo Harve. Over the next few years, with declining enrollment reaching a low of 486 students in 1984, the leadership of the University of Charleston saw the need for change. 
In 1989, Dr. Edwin Welch was selected as the new president. By 1994, under his leadership, the University of Charleston was able to eliminate a 20-year cumulative operating fund deficit. Welch continues to serve with his more than 23 years in office, second only to Leonard Riggleman. In 1997, 50 years after moving across the Kanawha River from downtown Charleston, the University of Charleston dedicated the Clay Tower Building, a state-of-the-art educational facility and the first new building in almost 30 years. This began a period of growth in the university's infrastructure, including three new residence halls, the Morrison Fitness Center, the School of Pharmacy building, East Apartments, and a new parking garage. 2003 was a busy year at UC. Football returned as a varsity sport and the main entrance to the campus was moved from Geary Student Union to Riggleman Hall. And that year, U.S. Senator Robert C. Byrd was awarded a baccalaureate degree 53 years after he attended Morris Harvey College. The arts were celebrated in 2004 when the old Riggleman Hall Library was transformed by Dr. Janet Welch into the Irma Byrd Gallery and became home to the West Virginia Women Artists Collection. Expansion continues to this day. 2006 saw the opening of the UC School of Pharmacy and with it UC's first doctoral program. In 2008, the Graduate School of Business opened in downtown Charleston. And on January 1, 2013, the University of Charleston officially opened UC Beckley and UC Martinsburg on the former campus locations of Mountain State University. This coincided with a move into the world of online learning, enrolling students in several new fully online degree programs. From humble beginnings as a small rural seminary to a university offering undergraduate and graduate degrees at multiple campus locations and online, the University of Charleston is poised for the next 125 years, ready to take students, young high school graduates and non-traditional adult learners alike to new academic heights for a bright and promising future. <laughs>